location identification. Uh, whatever my channel's called, Tom Brugan, I guess. <laughs> uh, I've been getting after it on the goat barn a little bit more, and I just figured I'd stop and give y'all an update. Clearly, I'm putting up some siding, and I put some windows in. Um, I guess I could have videoed putting the windows in, but like anything else, it's not difficult. We did make one change. Um, you guys might notice the windows look a little smaller than the holes that were there. Well, you can look through that window and see the other side. So we originally framed for two foot by four foot windows, which was silly because we framed it first and then went to look for windows and realized they were a hundred bucks a piece. Uh, and they, I guess they're not all that standard of a size. I don't know. I thought they would be, but anyway, so we got lucky. My wife found these windows on clearance. They're two foot by three foot. Uh, they were half the price of a two by four. So we snatched them up and I framed it in. So I can take you on the inside here and show you, I guess. Uh, which is fine. Two foot by four foot. We pulled that number totally out of our backside. So here you can see I just built a little, just a little box in there and uh, had to find a way. I had to put some spacers in here for skin, basically, for to, to compensate for the space on the 45s. Man, this is the first time I looked at it from the inside. That's pretty. Oh, that's so pretty. With the slats and the siding. Uh, clearly my window holes aren't very square, huh? But the windows are level. So it says. So the level said. The barn's not level at all. We know that. Oh, but anyway, so the siding. Um, I cut all that out on my sawmill. So it's all 3 8 inch thick. Just flat, just like a, like a hardy plank. I didn't put a wedge on it, so it's just flat. Overlapped it, uh, seven inch wide with a six inch reveal. But got the windows put in, just one by four trim. It's actually seven eighths thick. Um, actually set in really nice right behind the windows. I thought there was gonna be this goofy gap, but there wasn't. Not sure how that happened, but it worked. Um, so yeah, it's actually trimmed in, looks really good. And then we're just, we're doing, a, we're buttoning the siding up. Some of these pieces they wanna curve out and kind of, uh, loose so I'll probably have to face nail some of it. I've been trying to uh, Conceal the nails on all of it, but some of them are wanting to bow out a little bit So we'll face nail as needed and just caulk the holes But anyway, just thought I'd show you that update um, Lord willing I might get this side all sided today. I don't know that um, These long cuts up top are gonna be a little odd <laughs> Odd a little awkward awkward odd um because they're real long, flat, like it's like a 12 degree angle. I can't do that on the miter saw, so I'm gonna have to, uh, you know, set up a jig and do it with a circular saw or something to cut those. Um, but yeah, it'd be cool to get this wall done. And uh, you know, if I do or don't, whatever. The whole back wall, it's simple. I can side the whole back wall real easy, just slap it up. There's no windows or doors or nothing to worry about. And of course, the other wall on the east side will take a little bit of effort because it's got to be. Um, it's gotta be boxed in too for the windows. So that'll be, I don't know, maybe tomorrow. But anyway, yeah, I'm really digging the way this looks. It looks really, really nice. It's amazing what some siding could do. It's just like all of a sudden it looks done. It looks so finished. Uh, it's just crazy to go from looking like, you know, something that's just cobbled together with these, you know, goofy looking 45 degree slats to all of a sudden it's finished and square and it all looks neat. So yeah, I'm proud of it. I'm happy with it. I've got to cut these little awkward strips to go under the window here as well. Um, I didn't, I wasn't going to fool with trying to like cut this long narrow strip and then notch it out here. So I just, just come straight down. You'll have a seam right here, but that'll be okay. That's way easier, way more time effective than trying to notch around. So it is what it is. Anyway, just want to give you a little update. Back at it. All right. So I've been using these little uh, gecko gauges. Uh, putting up the siding on the barn and it looks pretty doggone good if I may say so myself these little deals uh, I had a friend suggest them to me and I'm super happy with them uh, and no I don't get paid for this unless gecko gauge wants to see this and pay me but anyway I just want to talk about some of the things I've been able to do with them primarily I've been able to do all the siding work completely by myself and actually just for grins this morning when I was down lower actually on the opposite wall just as a test I tried to see if I could hang siding one-handed so do I ever want to be an amputee one-handed? Absolutely not, but I understand there's people out there that are. And so if you want to do some siding work, by God, these will let you do it. Uh, so I was able to put, put both of them in position, you know, and then with one hand, of course the siding, this side is light enough. With one hand, I was able to pick it up, you know, set it into a little notch here, and then with one hand go along with the nail gun. But the other thing I was going to show you right now is using them as a, as a gauge to measure down. So I'm getting up here to the top 
tram and see I've pre-installed my tram so the the siding's just going to butt up to it well you got to ask yourself with a one inch overlap how do you know where to rip this board well it's pretty simple I set my gauge up right here and you can see where the notch is of course I think you can I can't because it's bright out here but anyway you can see where that notch is so you know exactly where the bottom of your board's going to sit and it looks like we're right there whoops where are we five and a half yeah right at five and a half to the bottom of the to the notch so i know that this end of the board has to be five and a half I come over here on my other end <clears throat> forgive me i'll have to move this but we'll just make it all in one video got to move my little step ladder here and i highly doubt this structure is square i can tell by looking at it that it's not so we'll scoot that over Open my tape measure with my teeth. We'll do the same thing. So we're going to butt up against the lowest point. And we're going to see where it sits on our notch. What is that? Four and a quarter? Oh, focus. Just shy of four and a quarter? Yeah. I always like to talk about measurements and strongs and strongs and shies. So just shy of four and a quarter. So that's just another way these things can help you out. Like I said, I just want to show you what I have. Five and a half, five and a half four and a quarter. Um, four and a quarter shy. But yeah, I just figured I'd mention that. What in the world? Wow. There we go. Get her to focus. So yeah, little gecko gauges. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I did with them. Uh, running these little short pieces of trim right up through here. I um, just use one gauge. It's a narrow enough piece. You can just use one for a, for a holder just to... The, and again, just use it as a gauge. Do I need it to hold the board up? No, the boards are super light, but I can't hold up a 12 foot long span by myself and nail it and keep it all level. So these help you. This is your extra set of hands. Uh, yeah, so I've used them all the way around. I'm gonna finish this wall today for sure. That was my absolute goal was at least finish this wall. I'm getting into these long, these long shallow cuts, which kind of suck because I can't use the miter saw for them. So I'm gonna have to actually draw it all out and then use the circular saw, which is fine. But by golly, about, three or four more boards and I'll have this wall done and then I'll be working on all the other walls so anyway like I said I just wanted to mention the little gecko gauges I'm um, super happy with them I think these were like 60 bucks on Amazon maybe um, and I think I found them on like Home Depot's website too whether or not they have them in the store I've never looked but I think they probably do so yeah gecko gauges I'm, I'm winded and I'm not thinking clear so if you are looking at doing some siding work I highly recommend them well, looky here I found another use so I gotta try to measure how long this board needs to be, this next angle piece to go up. Um, I don't have anywhere good to hook a tape measure to here and it's too long of a span for me to be able to just kind of hold it out there and see it. So I move my gauge over right to where the end of the board's gonna be and um, clamped it in place. So that'll give me something positive to hook my tape measure to. So now I can string my tape measure this direction and uh, take my measurement off the other end. Just another use, figuring these little puppies out. All right, well, a little update on the progression of the goat barn. I'll show you guys what I'm doing here. Um, we decided to go with lap siding on the interior, just like how we did lap siding on the exterior. We were just going to go with just flat and just do planks, um, but thinking it through, seeing how much the exterior has already wanted to shrink and warp as it dries a little more, I figured if we did butt joints all the way down, for one, if they weren't perfectly square, you would see the gaps. But those gaps would then grow as the boards dried so by doing a lap siding and overlapping an inch it's not going to shrink an inch so you're not going to see a, a gap form up and it gives you actually a lot of play there's a lot of boards on here that only have about six and a half inches of clear not seven um, but they're again compensating that overlap um, this piece of corner trim here actually it's got Wayne on it right there but it's just enough that this piece overlapped and then when you caulk it you'll never know um which is kind of one of the luxuries of having your own sawmill you can decide what gets thrown away and what gets used whereas if you're going to the store all you're going to find is stuff that's in considerably good condition maybe warped or twisted but you're not going to find anything with significant Wayne that you get a discount on or anything like that anyway so to do this um because we wanted to do corner trim just like here on the exterior so there's two pieces of one by four here that are butted in together. You can see obviously this one overlaps that one, so this looks like a one by three, but that's okay. I could have cut this one bigger, I guess, to make it look even, but it just doesn't really matter. But we wanted to have that same corner trim and the butt joint look like we had on the outside. 
To do that, I had to add framing right here in the wall. So I took a two by four and here's two by six that I just already had cut. I managed to use the ball scrap to do it and just blocked this out a little bit. So there's a little spacer block in there that fills that gap, ties it to the exterior wall. So that's solid. So I did that on each corner. I framed in the corners enough that you can put your one by four on and still have, still have a strip to nail to with the siding. Uh, so I had to do that all the way around. And then on the bottom corners, we intend to put on the floor, when it's all said and done, we're gonna put down half inch treated plywood as a smooth floor because of all these gaps that opened up again with the green lumber. So we're gonna put in uh, pressure treated plywood. So we put a little 5 8 inch block underneath here for now just to hold everything up to make sure that one's actually stuck. I gotta hammer it out, but the other one's all pulled out. But anyway, just a little spacer block. So you can see there's a gap under the edge for right now, but that'll let us slip our plywood up underneath of the the siding, so to speak, the wall board, so it'll be a nice flush look when it's all said and done. But uh, yeah, it's all coming up nice, closing in. We are not putting insulation in the wall again. We talked about it quite a bit, but we doubt we'll ever condition the space any more than maybe in the wintertime there might be a heat lamp going, but that's really not the plan. Um, so we just figured it's really not worth messing with insulation. The building isn't waterproofed exceptionally great, so I didn't want to fool with vapor barrier, insulation, all that, wanting to cause mold issues. It's easier just to let it breathe in this case. Anyway, we'll end up taking the wall board all the way up. But right now I'm stopping at about four feet because we're gonna go ahead and run some electrical. Don't know if we'll ever hook it up, uh, but we'll go ahead and install the boxes, run the wires, just the way, that way we've got an option. Um, get that done and then we'll go ahead and close the walls all the way up. But by coming up about four feet for now, that's enough that the goats won't kick any more bedding into the walls. I went through these two walls before I started nailing up and raked it all out and used the leaf blower actually because it's hard to rake it all out of those little scaps. So just use the leaf blower, blew it all out. Uh, anyway, sounds like my wife has something really important she has to show me. So I'll cut off that, but just wanted to give you guys a little update on how we're doing the inside. All right, so another little update on the siding. Went ahead and brought the back wall all the way up. That last piece, get off of me! You fools, I just had to bait them in the pen with the scoop and now they're all jumping all over me like they... Look at them. Look at them. Nothing in there. Now go away. They keep jumping up on me. Uh, anyway, so yeah, that top piece, I think it's going to be ripped just a little bit. I don't think it's quite going to fit up there. Um, it's not seven inches to the bottom of the joists. But anyway, I got the back wall all the way up. Um, now we're gonna get into the, that was the easy one of course. Now we get into the more tedious stuff. I've got to frame around these windows and uh, get them brought on up. And then of course, this this front little wall here, that'll be easy because it's blank and that wall's easy. But I've got to get a piece of conduit run up inside the wall first for electrical before I can close it up. And then of course I made a video talking about the floor, but yeah, the floor is going in. So that's nice to actually finally start putting a, a more solid floor in here that's not full of gaps. Just half inch pressure treated plywood. So. That'll give us a nice floor. It'll be easy to shovel, easy to sweep. That's the plan anyway. But yeah, interior siding going on up. It's really, look really nice to see it look so finished. Now here was a very important step for siding the interior of the barn. Um, I think I mentioned it in one of the other videos, but just had to run a conduit in the wall. We, we're still not 100% sure what we're going to do on electrical in here as far as where everything's going to be. We've got a pretty good idea. Um, but what we're planning on doing is all exposed conduit and boxes, so we're not going to have them, you know, flush inside the wall. They'll be face mounted to the wall. So for now, in order for me to go ahead and finish closing up this wall, I just had to run this conduit. So outside, ultimately the power is going to come, of course, from the house. <coughs> and it'll run down, <coughs> excuse me, and the conduit will be buried, you know, come up right here inside the wall. And then just come up and stub out in the eave right there. So it's just, to, it's just to make sure that I can get power in. Once I get up here in the eave, then we can take it wherever we want, um, with or without conduit. So I just had to go ahead and get that put in the wall so that now I can start boxing this wall up and get it all closed in.